Hello everyone, Linda Israel here, and I thought I would share with you a technique of altering a book page to be pretty background papers. I've got a book page here in front of me. Actually, I have a couple, so I'm just going to get two for now. And my book pages, if it matters to you, they are approximately nine and a half inches by about six and a quarter inches really it doesn't matter if you have a variety of book pages try it on different sizes i'm gonna put some gloves on because this gets messy i've got some basic just acrylic craft paint in white and i don't remember if i've already opened this one in a while and i'm just going to squeeze some out and then i've got like an old hotel key, an old gift card. I think this is actually from a casino. We have a few of those here in Oklahoma. And I'm just going to cover the whole book page with this a white acrylic craft paint. And I just wipe off my card and save it for another day. And let's dry these. You want to make sure that your page is dry for the next step. I don't need my gloves. We'll take those off. I've got a couple of rubber stamps. And I'll show you this technique really quickly. Grab yourself a scrap of text weight paper. Grab your rubber stamp because we want to make a mask and stamp it. I'm using Archival Ink Jet Black. And remember when you're stamping, kind of march your stamp across the ink pad. If your ink pad is smaller, then make your ink pad go back and forth. And then you want to stamp, you want to press straight down, and you want firm, even pressure so that the ink can transfer to the paper. So now you've got this piece, and then what you do is you fussy cut it out. And I'm just going to, for demonstration purposes, we're going to pretend that's fussy cut out because I've already done a bunch of these. And then I have Zig Two-Way Glue. I'm going to take a little bit of this and just basically make a couple of X's on the back. And I'll set this to the side. You won't be able to see it, but there's a little bit of that glue on there. And I'm going to set it to the side face up with the sticky part up to dry. Here's where I have stamped a bunch of these and fussy cut them out. I've already used them. I found that if I use a piece of acetate, think sheet protector, maybe some uh, laminate sheets that you might have. I happen to have transparency films here that I've had for a long time. And these stick really well to that. So we're prepared. I've got those stamped. I've also done it on some bugs. The first thing I want to do is I want my images to stand out. So let me go back over here to my one of my examples. I stamped the B first. I masked them. Then I stamped the flowers. I masked those. Then I stamped the leaves. So let's do the same process, process but we're going to use a dragonfly stamp. So again, I'm just going to come in here, march it across my ink pad a few times and then stamp it. Now you don't have to use the stamps that I'm using. Of course, these are stamps that I offer for sale in my shop. Look around and see what kind of images that you may have that would lend itself to make a pretty background paper. So I've stamped the dragonflies a few times. Now I'm going to come in with my dragonfly masks that I made and just lay those right over my stamped image. Makes it really simple to create pretty backgrounds and be able to pick out the dragonflies because they will be on top once we get the flowers stamped. Okay, if you haven't already done so, like this video and subscribe. If you have any questions, do feel free to leave a comment down below.
I'd also love to have your feedback of what you thought of this particular project. So tell me what your thoughts are. Will you use this type of a technique? What are some of your favorite images that you would like to use for something like this? And I will give you a tip that when you do the zig to a glue, don't go in here and do it precisely. Just want it a little bit because if you do it too precisely, it's hard to lift these off of the base paper once you're ready to get to that point. Now the dragonflies have been masked. I'll grab my next stamp, which is my little, what did I call this? I think I called it a daisy, sketched daisy. So now what I'm going to do is come in here and try to decide where I want the flowers to be. So for example, I kind of want this dragonfly kind of circling around and I'll stamp it. If I'm getting close to where I want to be in an area that I've stamped before and I need to mask it, I'll go ahead and grab one of my masks and line it up. It's important that when you cut your mask, if you can, cut it as close to the stamped outline and then that way you won't get a shadow effect. In fact, if you can kind of cut it past the outline and go into it, then you'll actually have a better coverage where the lines come right up to each other. All right, now I've got those masked off. So I'll stamp in here and I'll lay another mask down. All the flowers have been stamped, so I'm just putting down the masks over them so they're ready for the next step, which is to stamp all the leaves. And then on my stamp sheet, I have leaves, so I'm just gonna grab my acrylic block here. Oh, and this, this was dragonfly number two. And now I'm gonna come in and stamp the leaves. Since there is a little bit of a stem, I wanna stamp it so that the stem is behind the flower. So I'll kind of position these where it stamps in between the flowers. Then once I think I've got all of the stamping done, I will remove the mass. I'm looking here. I think maybe like that. And that's where having a little acetate sheet like this comes in really handy because now all I've got to do is just come in here and pop these back in place. And since I've already done the work once, when I want to do this technique again, all I have to do is just come back to my little acetate sheet and use my masks. So don't uh, cause yourself more work use what you have already made. Okay, so that's all the flowers. And now I'm just gonna come in and put my dragonflies down. If they lose their stickiness, just flip them over and add a little bit more of the Zig 2A glue, let them air dry. And then when you go to stick them back on your acetate, they'll stay. Okay, I think I've got all of them. You can see how it makes those dragonflies be on top of the flowers. All right, let's clean off the desk and we'll do some watercolor. I cleared back the mixed media paint or the acrylic paint. And while I was at a break for a moment, I did go to my scanner and I scanned this in. Do know that if you purchase my rubber stamps, you are allowed to scan your work print that work and then sell the artwork. You are not allowed to scan this and sell a digital file. So if you are loving the stamping and the layout, but you want to do it in multiple different colors over and over again, scan it in and then you can print it and then color it again. I've got a watercolor palette here. I did a review on this on Amazon. So I'm going to take my spray bottle and spray the palette a little bit, which will activate those paints. I've got a little mixing palette over here that I reactivated that I was using for the other colors. And the first thing that I want to do is figure out what color do I want to make my flowers. On the other pages, 
I made the flowers purple on this one and then I did a purple center and then used a metallic paint to make them a metallic white. So I'm kind of thinking that I use this blue here. Maybe we'll use that blue on the flowers and I'll use a purple on the dragonflies. I've got a mix of blue that I've already started here. So I'm going to wet my brush and I think I want to grab peacock blue. So I'm going to grab a little bit of that peacock blue and put it down into that water. Okay, that'll work. And then all I'm going to do is just loosely watercolor these flowers. And you don't have to be precise. It will beat up a little bit on the acrylic paint. That's okay. If you don't like the way it's beating up, you can take a paper towel and swipe over it and pick up the excess paint. I'm just going to come in here and color this really quickly. Once I have the flowers pretty much painted, I'll go back in and anywhere that I feel that it needs a little bit more paint, more watercolor, I'll go ahead and just add it where I feel I need it. If there's a spot that's too dark and you don't like it, add a little bit of water and you can lift it. I'm just cleaning out my brush. I do recommend that you either allow your piece to dry or use a heat tool. Today I'm going to use a heat tool. I think that's sufficiently dry. I've got a purple that I've started in my little palette here from the others. I am going to add a little bit more water. And then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to drag this dark purple into that. And then mix that around. And now I'm going to color the dragonflies. So I'm just going to add a little color across the tops of them. All right, so now I've got the dragonflies painted in. And the next thing I want to do is dry this, and we're going to paint the leaves and then the centers of the flowers. I've got a little bit of a green that I started earlier and I think I think this green will work for these leaves as well. So now I'm just going to come in here and add the green to the leaves. I think I got all the leaves, so I'll clean off my brush again and then we'll pick up the yellow. I'm just going to put a little dot of yellow in the middles. And I want to dry this again. So one more time. The centers of the flowers might still be a little bit wet, but we'll be okay. I'm going to add a little water to my palette. I took out one of the colors because I think I want more of a paler pink background. So I've got pink lilac here. So I'm going to load up my brush with water, grab some of this color, and put it in the water here. I don't want it to be very bright. This is going to be my background. So I'm going to come in here and then just loosely, again, just watercolor around all of the images in the background. All right, I think I'm at a point now to dry this. Right, that's looking really good. I've got some metallic paints out. Forgot to spray them, so let's do that. And these are a metallic or pearlescent stamp of 
these are metallic or pearlescent paints that I also picked up off of Amazon. I'm going to go into this purple and add just a touch of purple shimmer to the tops of these dragonflies. Clean my brush out and dry this one. I'll pick up this metallic blue and I'll just make a few little stripes on the flowers. So now I've added a little bit of the blue shimmer. And you can kind of tell where you've been if you tilt your page and you can see the shimmer on it. And it may be hard for y'all to see it, but I can see it. Now I want to grab some green and do just a little bit on the leaves. And why not a little bit in the centers of the flower? So I'll grab just a little bit of this gold and drop that on top. And that is painting a background page with watercolor paint. So there is one, and here are two more that I thought would look really good together. When this one's dry, I'll scan it in. And then I think I'll use these to make some elements for some of my journals. I hope you enjoyed seeing a way to transform a book page into a mixed media background because we mixed acrylic paint and watercolor paints with stamping to create this background. Hey, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, comment below if you have any comments or questions. Do check the description box for the stamps as well as the watercolor paints. Yes, I am an affiliate with Amazon, so yes, I do get a commission. I greatly appreciate it if you're going to purchase anyway to click on my link. And what else? There's other items in there as well. You can also check out my Amazon store and then my store online at my website. Y'all have an amazing day. Do something fun. Do something fabulous and do something kind. Share a little kindness in this world. Maybe we can make that spread like wildfire. And before we know it, everybody's being kind to everybody. Can you imagine? All right, y'all take care. Lots of love to you. Bye, everybody.